can you just go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Nasser Arshadi, Professor and Chair of the Department of Finance and Legal Studies here at AMSL. So what happened last week with stocks such as GameStop and AMC and commodities such as silver? Okay, let me start from uh, back up a little bit. Let's say uh, what determines price of a share of stock? Uh, it's a, a function of two different elements. One is that uh, how the, pro the company is doing today? How profitable is the company today? Well, in addition to that, what are the prospects in the future for the company? So if you combine those two elements, you have the stock price. So in the case of uh, uh, GameStop and AMC Entertainment, for example, the current level of activity does not show as much profitability or they are losing money so if stock price is going higher, it means that we are expecting a much better future prospects for the companies. Now, these are the fundamentals of the stock price. Uh, for example, since everyone talks about GameStop, let me talk about AMC Entertainment, just as another example. AMC Entertainment owns thousands of movie theaters across the country. And because of the pandemic, most of their theaters are closed. So their cash inflow has declined drastically. Even though some of them have been opened, still significantly fewer, a small percentage of these theaters are open. So their current financial position is not all that good. So um, for stock price to go high, higher or increase, uh, that means that market participants should expect a better future prospects for the company. Now, let's look closely at that. Um, if pand when pandemic ends, well, we know that people are gonna go back to theaters, uh, but are we gonna have the same number of uh, theater audience as we used to have prior to pandemic? All indications are that probably not. The point here is that uh, the future prospects for AMC may not be all that great. So seeing that the, and the same obviously for game stock. So seeing their stocks going higher uh, at the level that we are seeing uh, do not, are not justified uh, with the fundamentals of these stocks. Can you explain shorting and hedge funds? If hedge fund thinks that a price of stock uh, is, is it's overpriced, they can borrow those shares from their broker and sell it at that supposedly overpriced uh, levels. And then within uh, 10 days or so, usually that's the average number of days that shorting goes on. Uh, if share price drops uh, and they were correct in this, they can go back and buy these shares at lower price and return it to the broker and and pocket the profit or the difference in profit. So that's, so what uh, the, uh, the traders uh, have done is that they collectively have gone out and buying these shares, even when occasionally share price have declined, they kept buying it rather than selling them. It has created what we call a uh, short squeeze. And that means that, uh, uh, for hedge funds, share prices instead of coming down, they keep going up. At some point, they have to actually buy those sh sh shares at much higher prices to return to the broker and may uh, and have huge losses. Mm. So that's really what the notion of, of uh, short squeezes are all about. If you wonder who hedge funds, uh, hedge fund firms are, these are entities that are less regulated. They get funding from uh, wealthy investors and institutional investors and turn around and invest in relatively higher risk projects and meaning that higher than average in marketplace because they often promise their investors somewhere around roughly 20% or so returned uh, whereas average market return maybe I don't know 5% or 6%. What was different about this short squeeze versus ones in the past? Because here you have a community of people uh, 
acting uh, in tandem, in concert, in their trade. So if you have two plus million uh, traders go to the market and trade in one direction after having these chats, uh, and a whole bunch of others are not really uh, trading. There are all these middle ground people that are neither buying or selling. So you have one group of very active traders buying this thing, and then that pushes the price higher. Now, if hedge funds get really uncomfortable and they realize they are being uh, squeezed, they may actually also go back and buy these shares so they can return it to their brokers. That also uh, pushes price higher. So that's really how it plays. Uh, but the problem is that these price hikes really are not justified by the fundamentals of these stocks. As I mentioned before, neither the current profitability of these companies nor their future prospects justify mm -hmm. the, uh, the prices that we see or increase in prices that we see. And going forward, uh, at some point, stock prices will come down and reflect what the fundamentals are. What do you think is behind this? Uh, traditionally, for decades and decades, Wall Street firms have uh, operated in a very centralized fashion. You know, hedge funds do all these trading, they can short stuff and uh, price can go down and they can profit and they can further lower the price of these stocks, etc. But all of a sudden you have this group of people coming in and through their trading, they can actually beat um, uh, hedge funds in their own game. So I think it's an interesting phenomenon and I think it will stay. I mean, this phenomenon will stay. And I suspect some of these traders are pretty active in, in cryptocurrency trading as well. That this explains some of their motivations because when you hear about motivation of these folks, of course, the obvious one is that I want to make a lot of profit, money. The second is that I really don't like the way markets function now. Mm -hmm. We are left out of this market. It's run by big businesses. I want to make a difference. Mm. And in fact, some of these folks, when the share prices started dropping, they didn't sell. They held up. They said, I like this stuff. I'm just going to keep it. Mm -hmm. So they, that's sort of philosophical point of view here, too, that, you know, I'm playing this game not just for money, but there's a bigger, you know, philosophy behind it. So this phenomenon of people working together via Wall Street bets or social media, what implications do you think this has for the stock market in the short and long term? Right. So um, uh, the uh, the am amount of trading these areas that are, for example, on GameStop or AMC and Bed Bath and Beyond and others, uh, as a fun as a percentage of total volume of transactions is quite small. So it just shows volatility in those stock prices. It doesn't really affect the, the whole stock market itself. You also have checks and balances in place. I think uh, Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, is basically tas tasked with, uh, with overseeing activities in the marketplace and, and being sure, ensuring that there's no uh, fraud going on, mm. and they're in pretty good shape in terms of, of uh, protecting integrity of the marketplace. So uh, neither in short run nor in long run, I expect to see much a problem because of these sorts of transactions. Uh, as you said, on Friday, markets went down, and today, so far, markets have been up almost by the same amount. That's what the stock market does. And uh, so, you know, market is here to stay and it's healthy. But this is, again, as we said earlier, this is sort of a new phenomenon, an interesting one at that, that mm -hmm. social media helps a large number of traders to get together and trade on one direction or the other. And that can affect the share price of those companies. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of comments online, oh, what's happening with Wall Street bets? That's collusion. Why is that not collusion in your mind? Uh, because it's not really an illegal 
uh, scheme of any sort. People are talking to each other. It's totally voluntary and it's open. Everyone uh, can go and join. And if they decide as a group to decide, uh, you know, they are going to trade in some fashion, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so it's not illegal. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's not price fixing per se. The whole bunch of others in the marketplace can trade differently if they want to. Mm. Uh, if they choose not to, then that's a different story. Okay, so pure speculation. Um, do you think what's happening right now with the stock market will end up affecting any of the um, COVID stimulus payments? Yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. Some of these stimulus payments, uh, the checks people receive in some fashion was $2,000 in their pockets. That's, they can put a fraction of that in, you know, in stock market. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of that is going on as well, that a whole bunch of people are involved in trading that uh, they may have otherwise, um, they may not have had opportunity to make the investment. I think there's some of that going on. Um, you may also argue at the, you know, at the larger scale, uh, because interest rates are so low and the Federal Reserve is pumping so much cash in the marketplace, the cost of money is rather low. Uh, individuals can, uh, can borrow a lot of money, the effects as asset prices and et cetera. All that leads um, to uh, a much higher volume of trading. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a bit broader issue than, than uh, the trading by, by these people we are talking about. Yeah. Is there anything we didn't touch on that you think is important to know about? Uh, no, uh, again, I want to finish by saying that uh, uh, while people are totally free to buy and sell what they want, but some of these stocks are really high in value. Again, considering that, for example, uh, GameStop uh, stock was somewhere around $5 share, and that's 300-some dollars, the fundamentals haven't really changed much. So, you know, uh, they may consider getting out of some of these investments because, uh, again, they may... Uh, efforts uh, losing them if they hold on them. That's totally fine too. But uh, at some point, uh, profit taking is a good idea too.